And we're back for the back nine of round two, final round, the Stampede 2024 PDGA B tier presented by Innova Dis. I'm here once again, Alex Lyon and Andrew McGill, otherwise known as Squeaky McGill. We're adding your last name to that nickname because it just flows so good. Quinn Berkovitz from Reno. That's his shot on hole nine. It was pretty smooth. Myself, Alex Lyon, Orange Vale, California. Chunking my way through the course. Andrew Gutierrez, Reno, Nevada. Smooth player. Great nose up glidey shots. Really impressed with those. Love watching it. We got Bo from Placerville here. Bo's been playing a very long time at the uh, local level. Yeah, Bo's been around forever. He's been, he was a shady cat for a long time. Shade, shady cat is in Shady Oaks in Orangevale. Uh, we have our leaderboard here. 15 under for McGill. A couple hot rounds on the front. Tristan and Spencer at six under par. We got a whole bunch of scores real close. Andrew kind of ahead of the game on uh, the field at 15 under. Let's get into this. I'm excited. You ever get that thing when you're so excited your hands start to tingle or is that the beer? It's probably the beer for you. Yes, I'll take that too. Hole 10, 310 feet. This shot's weird. It's like a straight shot, but there's also like a weird flexy sidearm. You really can't go with the straight shot because of the way the hill slants and how tight you have to throw the shot. The backhand is really not there. You can play, if you throw the backhand, the best you're going to get is probably 40 left, honestly. You have to go this flex sidearm to get within the circle. You have to throw this shot perfect because the disc is going to naturally want to pull downhill to get that flex out and the height. A couple of backhands myself with the sidearm. See, and there's no real like backdoor route. There's too much foliage. So you kind of have to punch straight at it. And the disc is naturally going to want to follow the hill. So it's not there. Quinn's going to go Wraith sidearm. Quinn's got a great flex sidearm. Let's see how it works. Oh, he went kind of more of a hyzer flip turn. I'm throwing a first run halo charger. These came out very stable and just turned it just a hair too much. If you missed out on uh, the first front nine, or I'm sorry, the front nine, and you heard the didn't hear the explanation, what's that shirt? Your uh, biscuits and corn? Biscuits and corn, Outer Bakes, North Carolina. It's a deli. Uh, they're known for their cornbread. Ooh, cornbread. That sounds delicious. We'll have to check that out. Bunch of layups here. No one really got close. Andrew somehow shanked it into the ground and is now 40 and misses because, you know, that's what he does. Oh, Quinn's got a little look at it, too. He's about 45. Tough bid. It's a lot more uphill than the video shows. It's pretty steep. So that 40 footer is playing more like 60. And we're all going to be tapping in real quick. And we're going to be moving on to the first par four of the round. I do like, so I do like this course for the factor that it does have a couple par fours. It has a par five where a lot of Tahoe courses or not just Tahoe. Actually, Tahoe does a pretty good job, but Northern California courses don't do a great job of adding par fours and fives. But Tahoe seems to sneak them in on these smaller properties and still be able to make them flow well, which I love. And I think a lot of the reasoning for that is a lot of courses in California are very old. Um, your standard 300 foot shots to kind of play to what discs were 20, 25 years ago. There hasn't been a whole lot of course design in Northern California in the past 15 years. Um, you That's don't really have those championship level courses. You don't really have the courses that challenge every part of your game. Um, it's kind of a bummer in some aspects, but it is nice to always play in a wooded environment for the most part. Yeah, and I mean, Stampede itself, like this is a fairly new course. It's, it's getting up in there in age, but it's only probably five, maybe six years old, I think. It's, uh, I believe it's Craig, Craig Getty designed, I want to say. 
Um, I think there he was does a lot of course design in Tahoe. I believe he might have moved back because he did move away for a period of time, but he's doing King Vale 2 now, which I believe we're playing for Legend of the Lake or it's King Vale 1. I'm not quite sure, but they are mostly Craig Getty design courses, and he designed some great Tahoe golf. And just so everyone's aware, hole 11 here, uh, it's kind of a straight shot. You can see Quinn and Alex kind of bending it off to the right a little bit, trying to punch through and get somewhat of a look. But if you just throw, I'm throwing a TL3 here, you throw it just straight 350, you'll have an easy putter shot up the hill. Um, as, long as, you beat three. The, as long as you beat that initial tree there in the sun on the right, if you're short of that tree but not punched right, you're not going to have a great upshot. You do need to get straight far enough to have a 90 degree angle, or I'm sorry, yeah, 90 degree uh, angle up. You can see Andrew here kind of hyzered out a little early. Um, you kind of want to beat this grouping of trees you see in the middle of the screen. Bo, you can see that alleyway just past that grouping. I'll have an easy putter shot up and down. And this is a great hole. It's a it's a true par four. It may be an easy upshot when you get to the landing zone, but there. Trust me, I love to break down par four and figure out how to eagle it but even the inside route there is not a way to get to this hole even though that second shot is so easy if you get to the landing zone trust me i would love to eagle this hole because andrew is whooping me right now by three quinn busting out that Ze oh he's going zephyr side i did not see this shot i did not see this either look at the glide on that thing Such a underrated shot, just that glidey big disc. My thing is, though, is if he does hit the basket... Does it stick? Is it going to catch that big of a disc? Because baskets were designed like a basketball hoop. So a basketball hoop is designed to catch... It's the size of two balls exactly. A disc golf basket is designed the size of two ultimate dis is it discs exactly, which ultimate discs are the size of a Zephyr. So is it going to catch it? little factoid if you guys didn't know that because uh the game was designed around ultimate this hole 12 par 3 315 the baskets down to the right you can kind of see it to the right of that pine tree there there's a uh, little inside you Dang. can see alex throwing here turnover shot there is a forehand the problem with the forehand is if you don't get the skip you're going to be right where alex is um, and that's just kind of the, the story of this course with the rocks and the duff and, you know, different yeah. trees and brush. You're not getting a lot of skips here. As Andrew just did, he tried that turnover and it kind of, it didn't beat that little guardian tree group, which is kind of the main danger of this hole. I didn't like this change though, from the par four, the par four is a pretty good hole. There is a very, very small percentage of a chance to eagle it. It's extremely small but it does play for a very good par four that is fun to play this par three is all right i'm okay with it but i would have preferred to play the par four again i threw a forehand there with a wraith got one of those very lucky skips as you can see Bo throws a forehand there um with no skip so it's kind of just hit or miss if you're going to get the skip or not i feel like the only way you're going to reach this is with a perfect turnover um or a lucky skip from a forehand Another thing, this is probably actually the real reason I dislike the par 3 versus the par 4, is it extends the walk to the next hole by a good 200 feet, and I am a lazy, lazy man. So I don't want to walk any farther than I have to. Bo laying up for 3. I'm tapping in my 2 there from 35. Alex tapping in a 3. Everyone's just kind of cleaning up 3s here. Not a huge separating hole unless you get a 2. No real super danger. Um, it's a tough two, though. I will say it's a tough two. It's but a tough no, two, but an easy three. I think you could yeah. have a little bit better of a design on, on this hole. Yeah, there's no real chance for bogey unless you do something very wrong. On the par four, though, you can get in some real trouble, which makes for a great hole. This hole, I love. It plays right on the water with the water directly behind it, which the lake's a little low right now, but it it still plays tough. I throw a grenade purely because of that speed control issue, and it goes right to it. But you saw Andrew tried to fluff a shot, and it ended up 
a little too soft, leaked to left, and he hit those trees. Andrew doing the same kind of thing here, leaving it a little left. That tree in the middle, it's kind of hard. You have to go left to right shot. You can't, the line you want to throw is right at that tree. Unless you're Quinn and you want to test the water and play this big sidearm out of round, which he executes very well. This hole had a rule that if you do go in the water, it's an automatic re -tee, which if you know the rules, this is this is an invalid hole, so we do need to watch out for that. If you're ever in play and you hear something like that, be knowledgeable that you can't have a stroke and distance hole on a course unless it's an XC tier. So if you're ever out of bounds, you do have to be allowed to move forward if you're taking a stroke. If you're not given a stroke, then you can re -tee. But we need to make sure that that's a forgotten rule that needs to be known. Quinn was inbounds by maybe a foot. Andrew taking another bogey because that's what he does. Myself, birdie, because I'm a baller and I barely made that putt. I really just wanted to be out on those jet skis out in the background. I was so angry with this round. I wanted to be in, out on the water beer in my hand jet ski having fun so if you look at scores here um alex had a rough start on the front nine he's picked it up in the back um back. <laughs> and i've kind of calmed down as far as getting birdies gotten birdies. a couple <laughs> bogeys here and there um things are starting to tighten up a little bit on hey man lead card all i can say is i'm a back nine bully i'm a front nine duff this hole's interesting um there's not many holes like it it's it's a, it's a crazy hole you're throwing straight at water downhill and you gotta get something that hyzers out quick with no glide so myself i went croc which is a very overstable zero glide disc and i just hammer it because i have a weak sidearm and i'm not gonna throw it in the water Bo, he threw a driver and he stretched out a little bit too much and we were very afraid he went in the water um, this is more the play you're looking for is a high dropout shot that kind of lands high on the hill and maybe gets a little trickle or just gives you a putt. Quinn, Starfire Bird, exact same thing, that high dropout trickle down. I'm throwing a crock here, kind of the same shot Alex threw. Um, just I have a better sidearm, but his worked out better. A little softer. I threw this shot first round and I was long right, so took a little bit off of it and i'm 15 feet Bo from water's edge he was also once again safe by just seven a, inches six a inches, couple inches. Yeah, that's a lot that's a lot a disc length yeah <laughs> i'm i'm just testing out this butt and i almost broke my ankle that was an okay bit i guess andrew with a good look at it he's probably 35 downhill Ah, he just he, had he didn't his. see the tree right in front of him. Those are tough putts when you have to like barely miss that Anheuser around a tree. Quinn with a nice birdie pickup to tie me. I feel like this hole there's not a lot of twos. Um, we didn't get really to see stats on it, but to have two twos on a card, I feel like that's good. That's really good because it's a hard stick uh, to get close and putting outside the circle on this hold is very difficult Especially if you go long as you can see there's those guardian trees I'm About um, 10 feet here tapping in my two. This is what you really want is just that close putt that you almost deflects that, it. Yeah, you don't want that guy That's where I kind of was the first round I did the same thing as you crock about 10 feet and I was like, oh man, this hole's easy second round not so much Bunch of three cleanups with Quinn and McGilligan with the birdies because they're good at golf or something. This hole is a pure sidearm hyzer. Just out over the water and let it dump in. That's a little high. I don't like that. I don't think he pushed it far enough. Well, the problem is if you go high like that with a sidearm, is you're gonna drift backwards you're gonna get that slight drift and you need a forward punching hyzer this hole makes me so incredibly nervous every time i throw it 
as you can tell. I am way too tight to the trees, and I don't trust anything flat over the water. You really have to trust your sidearm on this disc, on this hole, to come back, and your disc to fly how it's intended to fly. Throwing a captain's raptor here, and uh, somehow I actually trust the disc quite well, and I leave it wide enough to get up there, which is nice. It's a little booster to the motivation. Or the confidence, I'm sorry. Bow with the rare sidearm. Love Little that. tight, but he's got it flat. Does it work? Great job. That looked great. That looks, that's on the dance floor. Andrew stepping up with an understable putter here. He really hasn't thrown a single sidearm, has he? I don't think so. I don't. Uh, he's thrown a couple sidearm up shots, but nothing off the tee. So maybe he just doesn't trust that power oh, into a sidearm no, yet. Really I thought that disc was going to come out and it just kept turning and turning and turning. And he almost aces it. I almost shank this really, really bad and got a really lucky break. Quinn from 60 in the rocks can't really jump or he's going to break an angle. This was a, a very nasty spit. This was three quarters up the basket, kind of right in the heart and just uh, came right back at him. Good putt from Andrew. Yeah, that's the thing like we were saying, dude, those top three links, it's just, it's not great on a Mach 5. The rest of us tapping out. Had a nice little park job, luckily, trying to make a little comeback towards Andrew, get within two. Once again, here we are at Premium Dis. Awesome store in South Lake Tahoe. They got climbing walls, baskets, tons of discs to look through, bags, everything you think of, and it's just so fun. It's a great place to be. So uh, hole 16, I didn't check scores. I realized Alex was back by two. I got a little nervous because I knew Alex was playing good. Saw him throw this shot to 20 feet. Um, this was a point in the round where I was like, hey, you need to stop playing safe. You need to kind of lock it in. Um, See, that's where I screwed up because I did count scores and I counted your front nine wrong. I thought I was we corrected at the end. I remember that. Yeah. So I thought I was three back going into this point. So we both knew that Alex was back. We didn't know how far back two to three strokes. I had my scorecard correctly. I had the official scorecard this round um, and this is where I throw right after Quinn here. I needed to execute this shot. I thought I threw a good shot uh, when I threw it. Quinn throws this shot so well. He throws this punch hyzer that he tries to crash the trees. He says, he says he tries to crash the trees, but I've yet to seen him crash it. <laughs> I'm throwing an old T-Bird three here, trying to throw the same shot as Quinn. Little tighter. Bad kick. Bad, but okay kick. The thing, so the shot on this hole, there's two shots. I guess you could call it three if you're getting frisky. There's like a sidearm turnover, which is, it's, I did it, but it's wild. Um, you have a straight line through about a 10 foot gap that's halfway down the fairway. You punch it straight, or you throw the crash hyzer out around the outside, but you do play with foliage coming in. This is where I spit to. I had absolutely nothing. I hit a tree, I had like a little six inch window. I knew Alex was going to make this. He's not um, that guy. He was just locked in. He wasn't really talking to anybody. And he was he was ready to make this putt. Um, going into 17, knowing I'm only ahead by one, I had to birdie this next hole. Quinn just based this hole. He threw such a good shot. Uh, most people are throwing mid-range or fairway, myself putter. But Quinn likes to throw, the like we said, that slow shot with a distance driver on here to get himself on the dance floor and it worked great Bo and andrew tapping in some pars mcgilligan as well and we're moving on to 17. hole 17 is a straight shot 258 feet you have a forehand line to the left or you have a straight mid or putter shot down the right alex throws a captain's rafter here um and puts it literally right underneath it he knows he's in good position um you can see me kind of over there adding everything up. Quinn's going to go throw a uh, very similar shot here. Sexton Firebird throws this very well. A little he, tight. 
even Quinn birdieing this puts him one back as well. Um, at this point, I was only really worried about my card. I couldn't have any control of what the, the chase card was doing if they were going. I just know that I needed some birdies. Bo pulled that a little tight. Uh, he almost had two two feet left, and that is under the basket, but he's going to clip that inside tree. Oh, that was so close to perfect. I'm stepping up here with a uh, old star coyote. It's very similar to a Mako. I'm just telling myself, hey, you've thrown this shot before. You parked it first round. You just need to throw the exact same shot. I thought I was hitting that branch. Bro, you just taking a deep dive into your brain right now or what? Yeah, just a little bit. We want to hear about golf, not your brain. Bow from 40, almost. Andrew from 35, cash money. I swear that's the disc he's been throwing off the tee, but I'm not sure. Quinn from 20, 25? 20 probably. A little left. He he was not too happy with that one. Quinn's games excelled a lot in the last four years. I haven't been seeing him as seeing him as much since uh, we stopped touring together. And I know he doesn't practice a lot, but his game has evolved a lot. He's a much calmer player. Uh, he throws the shots much better, and his putting has come a long way. Me and Alex both tapping in for birdie there. Um, going into the last hole. Alex back by one. Why don't you walk us through kind of what you were thinking at this point? Uh, I I can't count because I'm illiterate. Um, so I thought I was two back. So going into the par five, I was like, I have to figure out a way to eagle this, which no one's eagled it yet. I don't know if it can be eagled because we've never really played it in tournament. So I throw this crazy up the gut line, which nobody threw. And I thought it was great. I, I saw Alex throw this shot and I was like... Okay, he's going for the eagle. Um, that's If you're going to go for it, that's the only way you can really get it, so we thought. Um, this is kind of more the standard shot. Punch it out right at that tree. Let it hyzer back. You want to get as far left as you can. There's an alleyway super far left, probably 50 to 60 feet more than that. And that's a great shot Gutierrez just threw. Um, that's really what most people are going for, is just straight out, fade in, get your birdie. Andrew takes it a little tighter and higher to get that drift left because he knows I'm pushing for him. I couldn't get to that angle um, that I wanted to first, second round, or practice rounds. So I threw it super high on Heiser to try to get over there. Quinn, low, low route that I was talking about previous round. He throws a great shot. I love that he, he took the, the chance on it. That's awesome. Bo, once again, not known for so much distance, so he's going to flex one out there, get himself in position. Bo's always going to play his game. There's not going to be any wavering on Bo. If he's two back, he's still going to throw the same shots he was going to throw if he was two ahead. You can kind of see those alleyways. That alleyway you saw from Bo is what Alex is going to kind of be looking at uh, for his shot. There's not a lot. So... I'm here, I have no footing. I see this high route that I could flex this shot through and I Shame. don't flex anything. I got kind of lucky though with the kick. I kind of got kicked back to the alley on the left and was about 300 feet out. Bo's kind of playing this right alley. It's kind of, like we said, standstill distance is key on this course when it comes to the longer holes. A little bonus skip there too. Yeah, that's a great position. Quinn, oh, I saw Quinn throw the nastiest standstill, like step out sidearm so far the first round and he gets into good position again. What I've are you got, throwing here? I'm throwing a roadrunner because I have some wild turnover line Whoa. I'm trying to hit because it where my disc ended up was not ideal. I thought I was going to be a lot better from that shot. This was my shot about 275, 300. Just put a putter up, try to get it through there. Uh, I think that put me at 30 putt for birdie. And that's that's really all you needed was a look. I'm hooking one out there. Hit a tree. You really wanted that one. I wanted I wanted every part of that hole. I was really it's such a hard it's a true par five, not gonna lie. Like you don't run into too many true par fives. But this one I still have yet to break down how to eagle. 
and the birdie i mean if you're getting the birdie most of the time you're putting from like 40 feet i think i think the best shot it's going to give you to eagle you have to push something far and really far left to get this alleyway if you get this alleyway i feel like it'd be a pretty straight shot um getting to that alleyway is the alleyway is a hard part we we've yet to figure out how and we have yet to see anyone figure out how to get to that alleyway with like the distance you need as well as the gap you saw of, alex's straight shot with a wraith um trying to hyzer take the corner out you saw my high shot with a halo destroyer trying to get over there nothing got there and i saw some early shots some luckiest putt of my life that was a great putt to cap off a win man that was great um the problem is is like you'd see people get the lane, but they can only get the lane if they chop the shot short. Like they don't have the distance to get it farther, or it's that they're playing for that shorter shot. But you're if you play that, you're like 450 feet out through a tunnel. I think you're farther than that. Probably. You're probably five to 600 feet if you want to hit the tunnel on just a chop hyzer. To get the distance you need to eagle it, you have to push that disc down the fairway. You start pushing the disc down the fairway, you're not getting the drift to the left. I had a bug on my leg and I really, I, it was tripping me out, so I had to smack it. We're all just tapping in here though. Andrew mopped us up with that one. He got a good win there. We all kept it pretty tight. Andrew and Bo had a little bit of a rough round, but they kept themselves in the game a little bit too. Quinn really surprised me with uh, this tournament. He's been playing well. I haven't played with him in a while, and it was great to see him really executing shots and kind of staying in his lane. Because uh, him and myself, we, we play a very similar game where we can get pretty frustrated and it gets the better of us. But uh, no, Tristan shooting that super hot round. What a guy. Uh, we got some other hot rounds. Uh, McGill with a nine. Great. Myself, eight. Spencer, eight. Uh, Nate. Oh, big dog Nate from South Lake Tahoe, premium disc guy. Uh, he also shot an eight climbing up the leaderboard. We had Andrew Bo fall off a little bit, but we've just got a tight grouping up top. It was anyone's game minus Squeaky over here. He just killed it. He killed it. All right, guys, on to the next one. We'll see you guys hopefully for Tahoe Pro-Am and Legends of the Lake. Me and Alex will be back with commentary. Don't forget to hit that bell, subscribe. See you next time. Peace.